Hello and welcome students. This is our lecture number 5 of Coplanar Concurrent Forces. In this lecture, we are going to start two more numericals and we will conclude this topic of resolution of more than two forces. In this two numericals, both are separated by some varieties. Let us see how. You can see what is the data of example number 6. Now, example number 6 can be done with two alternative methods. Let us discuss first method now. Second method we will not discuss, but we will just show how it is different. Let us see example number 6. What is given in the data that a will is in equilibrium. Now, what is equilibrium? Again, in yesterday's lecture, I have told you equilibrium means sigma h equal to 0 sigma v equal to 0 and resultant is also equal to 0. Now, under an action of 5 concurrent forces acting outward from the center and having equal angle. You can see here, this is the center of the will. Okay, this is the center of the will. There are 5 concurrent forces acting outward from the center of the will. You can see how. This is the first force F1. This is the second force F2. This is the third force 500 Newton. This is fourth force 700 Newton. And this is last force 600 Newton. Now, what is given in the data that three co consecutive forces are 500 Newton, 700 Newton, and 600 Newton, respectively. Respectively means first 500, then after 700, then after 600. Calculate the remaining two forces. So, our target is to calculate remaining two unknown forces. Now, Two method means what? The first method is that you can see in the figure that force F1 is drawn over here means along the positive x axis. You can see along the positive x axis. So, why? What is the reason behind this? When you are calculating sigma h and when you are calculating sigma v, remember what is the method? In the sigma h, first one is F1 cos 0. According to this figure, F1 cos 0. Then after F2 cos theta, okay, the equation will become like this. But when you are taking sigma v equal to 0 because of equilibrium condition, then what is the equation of sigma v? It is like this, F1 sin 0 plus F2 sin theta. So while doing F1 sin 0, you must remember that sin 0 equal to 0. So F1 will be eliminated. So we have two unknowns, F1 and F2. Out of 2, one, one unknown F1 will be eliminated due to sin 0 equal to 0. So, this is the particular logic behind taking F1 on positive x axis. Then after F2, then after 500, then after 700, then after 600 as you can see in the figure. But, you don't take 500 Newton on x axis. Because if you take 500 Newton force on x axis, then you have to take 700 then after, then you have to take 600 then after, and F1 and F2 will be 4th and 5th force. And 4th and 5th force are not getting zero value in the multiplication. Because there are some angles, not zero angles. Okay. So this is the particular logic to make the equations very easy. While in the second method means just discussed. If you are taking 500 on x-axis, then F1 and F2 will be somewhere in the wheel. So, you will get two equations. First one is for sigma h and second one is for sigma v. And then after you have to make elimination method for equation 1 and equation 2 to get value of F1 and F2. So, that particular method is quite difficult. So, just stick to the first method means stick to the figure given in the data only. Now, a wheel is in equilibrium under an action of five concurrent forces acting outward from the center and having equal angle. Mark my words, what is given in the data is equal angle. Now, what is equal angle? You must know that circle is having 360 degree angle. Now, there are five forces from the center. First one, second one, third one, fourth one and fifth one. So, 360 should be divided by five. So, 72 degree will be the value of each and every angle. So, each angle, this phi 72, this phi is also 72, 
this phi is also 72 and this phi is also 72. So all the angles are of 72 degree angle. So what is our calculation now? Just take sigma h equal to 0 due to equilibrium condition and also take sigma v equal to 0 due to equilibrium condition. You will get f2 and f1. Let us see how. You can see v is in equilibrium. So resultant equal to 0, sigma h equal to 0 and sigma v equal to 0. Each angle will be 360 divided by 5 because of 5 number of forces. So answer will be 72. So the figure is drawn over here. Now let us start with sigma h which is already equal to 0 written over here. 0. Now start from the positive x axis. First force is f1 and angle will be 0 because f1 itself on the x axis. So the value will be f1 cos 0. So here it is f1 cos 0. The second force is f2 making 72 degree with x axis. Remember again all the angles of all the forces must be measured from positive x axis only. So the second value will be f2 cos 72 written over here f2 cos 72. The third force is 500 and the total angle will be 72 plus 72 so 144. So answer will be 500 cos 144. The third and sorry fourth force is 700 Newton and the angle from x axis will be 72 plus another 72 plus another 72. So total will be 216 700 cos 216. The last force is 600. You can take total angle will be 72 plus 72 plus 72 plus 72 four times. So it will be 600 cos 288. So this is the value of sigma h in which all the components are in the form of cos. While we are calculating sigma v equal to 0 it will be in the form of sine component. The value and the angles will remain same. In your calculator, f1 cos 0, cos 0 will be 1, so it will be only f1. Cos 72 will be 0 0.309 and f2 will remain as it is in the multiplication. Remaining values you can find out from the Kelsey if it is minus or if it is plus. So finally, this is the equation is equal to 0 because of equilibrium condition. So you will get equation in terms of unknowns f1 and f2. So this is the equation f1 plus something into f2 is equal to 785.40. This is our equation 1. So while solving sigma h equal to 0, we are getting equation number 1. Similarly, when you solve sigma v equal to 0, you will get the equation number 2. Remember, all the forces are as it is, all the angles are as it is, just sign will be replaced by cos. Let us see how. The same figure will be there and sigma v is equal to 0. All the forces will remain as it is. All the angles will remain as it is. Just cos will be replaced by sin. Now here most important thing is sin 0 equal to 0. So f1 will be eliminated with the 0. So first term becomes 0. So now f2 is only unknown and remaining values can be calculated from the calculator. So by solving this or by comparing this with equal to 0, you will get this type of equation and from this you will get the value of F2 as 724.40 Newton. Now earlier in equation number 1, substitute the value of F2. So you will get this type of equation F1 plus 0 0.309 into this value of F2 724.40 is equal to equation number 1 785.40. So from Solving this equation, by solving this equation, you will get the value of F1, 561.56 Newton. So hence, both the values of forces, F1 and F2 is now available to you. So this is one variety of the circular wheel, which is in equilibrium under the action of five forces. Out of five, three forces are known to you and two forces are unknown, which we have calculated. Let us discuss one more numerical. Example number 10. What is given in the data? The following forces are acting at a point. Find the magnitude and direction of the resultant. We have to calculate direction and magnitude of the resultant. Matlab, we have to find location of the resultant. Now see, this is the figure. What is given in the figure? There are four directions. First one is north. Then opposite direction will be south. This one is east and opposite will be west. Now what is first force? What is given in the first force? 550 Newton acting towards north. So 550 Newton force will be acting towards north. Okay, so this is first. 
900 newton acting 40 degree towards south of waist so 900 newton force is acting towards this south of waist south of waist now what is the meaning of this word of it will represent grammatical change south of waist means waist to south so from waist to south you just mark the degree angle 40 which is given over here okay remember this thing south of waist means waist to south it is the opposite of the word now the other force is 125 kilo newton all the forces are in newton but this force is in kilo newton so convert it into newton okay so 1250 newton is written over here where it is it is towards south of east again off off means south east to south so you can see it is from east to south and the angle will be 60 degree which is given in the data okay just uh, do the reverse thing south of east means east to south so proper angle should be placed in the figure last force is 400 newton acting from waist to east here it is 400 newton acting from waist and going to east so this is the force of 400 newton going towards east so these are the values now what is most important thing in this numerical figure is not given to you see the data it is not given that as shown in the figure so you have to read all the four forces you have to draw the figure at yourself and have to mark angle somewhere in the figure which is correct okay now with the help of this figure our regular method will be going on so what is that sigma h the first force will be 400 angle will be 0 so 400 cos 0 second one is 550 from the x axis the angle is 90 so 550 cos 90 the third force is 900 from the x axis the angle will be 90 plus 90 180 and plus 40 220 so 900 cos 220 written over here and the last force is 1250 so from the circular 360 angle you can subtract this reverse 60 so you will get 1250 cos 300 by solving in the calculator you will get sigma h equal to 335.56 newton so here it is the value of sigma h similarly you can calculate sigma v all the forces and angles will remain as it is just sign will be replaced by cos let us see how this is the same figure and the sigma v all the forces all the angles will remain same cos is replaced by sign by solving the values in the calculator we will get the answer as minus 1111.04 newton here it is minus so negative here it is the printing mistake you will take as negative so left side or you can see it is sigma v so it is downwards okay now what is resultant under root of sigma h square plus sigma v square sigma h is positive sigma v is negative but the answer will be always positive for resultant 1160.60 newton now sigma h is positive but sigma v is negative so check the quadrant sigma h is positive sigma v is negative so quadrant will be fourth let us see how also find the direction of the resultant tan theta it is mode of sigma v by sigma h mode means always take positive values just replace sigma v and sigma h you will get this answer by doing tan inverse you will get theta equal to 73.19 in which sigma h equal to positive and sigma v is negative so r will be in the fourth quadrant so locate the quadrants and in the fourth quadrant draw the resultant r is equal to 1160.60 newton and make the angle theta with x axis as 73.19 degree which is the direction of the result so here our numerical is complete so students we have completed lots of varieties of numericals for the method of resolution of more than two forces so these varieties are enough for your exam point of view let us discuss new topic in the next lecture that is lamis theorem we will start lamis theorem which is very very most important topic from the subject point of view so we will meet in the next lecture which is lecture number six and lamis theorem so stay connected